I'm just having. Uh, oh, what we got here? There we go. Some breakfast at the old church. Hmm. If the yin factor of a society is stable, this is how you build a society, this is how you build a home. If the yin factor is stable, meaning it respects masculine and female, female traits in psychologically and biologically viable ways, right? it seems like a very pat statement, but our society finds it incredibly difficult to do, then men can be men, women can be women, women can be whatever they need to be, men can be whatever they need to be, nobody's dictating what someone should be, and everyone kind of finds the place that they like, and they get to enjoy not only doing what they like, but finding that what they like doing enjoyable to others. And natural forms of authority are accrued when you're able to live according to your nature. Now, society doesn't have that, so when you get too much yin or excess yin, that is a bad sign. That's where you get breast cancer and ovarian cancer, and you get uh, all of the unnecessary crime, deception, and moral ineptitude and decrepitude of our whole society. For many years, I've struggled with having a moral compass because in every society that I found myself, this is the society of other people, I slowly realized, it slowly dawned on me, that no one around me has any moral reasoning beyond what serves their immediate uh, social expedient, socially expedience or social convenience. In other words, whatever people are doing so that you can do whatever you want to do, that nobody's going to bother you. And that's, that's a certain order of moral reasoning. Of course, you don't want to do things and people are going to arrest you. You don't want to do things if somebody is going to, you know, think you're a bad person or the community around you is going to think you're a fucking idiot. But the fact is that people don't even do that very well. Right? Because what happens is that moral reasoning left at that level means that you're going to treat certain people differently than others based upon what authority, illegitimate though it is, they have over other people. The mind goes into a septic. The mind of a community can go into a septic state where the worst possible people have the greatest possible influence and where moral ineptitude goes unchecked and is provided the camouflage and the protection of what is considered moral or how people in that area live. So you get used to a septic situation. And what I found in a lot of the mental health issues that I had in the depression, that this was the result of the stress of living around people who have no moral reasoning. Take my life, for instance. Um, uh, I just went shopping, and there's one um, Chinese man, Japanese man, I think he's Japanese, he always finds the necessity to comment on what I'm buying in the store. I buy a lot of grapefruit, for instance, like right here. And he says, wow, there's the guy that buys the grapefruit all the time. And he'll almost every time I shop, it's like, there's the guy with the grapefruit. And he'll even turn to other employees and go, why, this guy buys grapefruit every time. You'd think fucking grapefruit was like fucking Jesus' testicles or something. It's just, it's a source of incredible fascination to him. Today I just came in, uh, the koala come branch of the same store. And he said, wow, you get around, right? And I said, yeah, actually I do. I'm a free man. I'm a free agent. I can go wherever I want. I came on the bus to koala come and there was a young man sleeping. And the bus driver had to wake him up because he stopped at the high school where he was supposed to get up. Why shouldn't that kid be allowed to sleep? Right? That's my child, who would never go to one of these fucked up child trafficking institutions, which is what they are. Again, it cuts through the moral decrepitude of our society. Schools are immoral. This church is immoral. The people who go there are immoral. And it makes them immoral. And it nourishes a complete lack of development of the moral faculties and abstract faculties, which are occupied by Jesus and God and the, 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 the business of Leviticus that is strangely compatible with all of the laws and customs of a cybernetic industrial civilization. In so much as just being a stupid, morally inept person is always good for civilization, right, clearly. And if you can think you're moral and if you can think yourself qualified to arbitrate for how other people should think and live, all the better for civilization. But I can't explain the way I live to most people. I've been attacked, I've been accused of things, and I'll just let them, because when people have no moral reasoning, how can I explain my life? 
that my way of life, that you don't have to engage in paid employment, you don't have to go to school, you don't have to send your kids to school, you don't have to get vaccines, you don't have to use doctors, and unless absolutely necessary, you don't need to go to the dentist to deal with cavities. Like, cavities just come and go. They're a natural part of the ecology of your mouth. The only thing I've, the problem I've ever had at the dentist is cavities. And I went 10 years once, and I had like five cavities. I went six months once, and I had 14 cavities. And I asked them, I said, what's going on here? You know, I take care of myself. You know, I was brushing and flossing twice a day with really organic, you know, products and all this sort of stuff. And they said, well, just people have different kinds of bacteria. That's what they said. People have different kinds of bacteria in their mouth. And the foods we eat, it just produces more bacteria. It's like, really? I think dentistry is a bacteria. <laughs> you know, that's what I think. I think it's a bacteria that eats the mind. Because quite often, when I've talked to doctors and when I've talked to dentists, they, they don't make any coherent sense. They don't reason properly. They reason enough for dentistry. There's dentistry reason. There's doctor reasoning. There's taxpayer reasoning. There's person who has a job reasoning. There's Christian reasoning. But it's not reasoning. It's fill-in-the-blank reasoning. Right? To reason is to reason is to reason. Show me a man who can reason, I'll show you someone who might actually stand a chance of not fucking the rest of his species over for the rest of eternity. It seems like a pretty good thing to do, and the fact that people don't do it gives you some idea of the state that we're in, and it becomes impossible to assign accountability. I would live in these communities with people who could not morally reason. They seemed nice, they did some nice things, they worked with other people in certain ways, but you'd see these tragic events happen, usually involving humiliation or violence or robbery to me, and just it would just go by without mention. The brains couldn't morally reason. And it being very stressful, it's become probably the single greatest stress of my life of living around people with no faculties that could even understand the idea that uh, it's totally legitimate not to work for a living, it's totally legitimate not to go to school, it's totally legitimate to have all your time to yourself. There's fucking 12 billion dollars times 7.5 billion dollars in, the, f in the, the fund of the world that's bonded in your name. They've bonded it in your name. You can take it whenever you want. If someone sets up a dummy, dummy corporation in your name in order to fuck everyone over to all the proportions of bombing all the fucking people and burning all the fucking people and having mass human slaughter called a war whose propaganda continues to run over the minds of our children with the uh, glorified psychopaths that are called their teachers and parents. Um, that's not legitimate. That's no way legitimate. I can access that money and I want anytime I want to. I don't go into that account. You can. There are books you can read to learn to do it, but that's not the point for me. Um, this is the point. <laughs> Walking my own walk. So I can, it's perfectly legitimate to live your life, not to make a buck. I'm not going to make any money today. I might save money if it serves me to do so. That's it. Money finds me one way or the other. I live on a passive income and disability. You make whatever you make in Canada for that, and you live on whatever you get. That's a that's a fair discipline to have. Excuse me. Right, I think. I think that's a fair, fair discipline to have. And there's, of course, the added benefit that I have moral reasoning. Right, you might listen to my videos and say, well, that guy's paranoid. He thinks everyone's psychopaths, you know. And I don't want to... I don't want to exercise any unnecessary advantage over other people because I understand that in seeing my videos you're going to hear a lot of things you might not have heard before. You might hear a lot of things you've heard every time you ever listen to one of my videos. But I'm actually subjecting the world to moral reasoning. And by moral reasoning, everybody's a psychopath if you work for a living. It is a scam. As, as George Bernard Shaw say, said, every profession is by its very nature a fraud perpetrated against the laity. That's you. That's this. Now, there are lots of good things about it, right? You can be dependent on it. It can keep a kind of social order. It gives people things to do. Uh, it seems a reason to give children discipline and a direction in life. And if done properly, in the middle class true tradition, those children should go on and be perfectly happy psychopaths for the rest of their lives. Shouldn't they? You see the problem, though. You see the quandary. And the quandary that I had when I became a Christian for one week when I was nine years old, which is all it took to show me that it was a completely preposterous, fucked up, completely septic set of ideas, and the morally decrepit people who animate them, though creatures of the dead. A smile of a Christian is worth nothing. The word of a Christian, or a Jew, or a Muslim, 
or a tax paying uh, uh, spiritual person or a new age person is worth nothing. I don't know how many times I could repeat that. It's worth nothing. Now they're not bad to the core but they have never been nourished in their brain's capacity for moral reasoning. You're going to have problems unless you're operating in a, in a set of parameters that they're not going to be asked to, to supply any more effort to moral reasoning than is absolutely necessary. That's where a lot of cancer and stress comes from. Is There's no cancer, there's no plague in the world that couldn't be answered with appropriate reasoning. And that involves questioning who you trust, who people around you trust, and what the actual results of those trusts actually are. It's actually a very profound subject, how to raise a child. Like I said, children, my child will sleep as much as he fucking wants to sleep. Right? Right away. The bus driver is waking him up, doing his part. He gets off the bus. He's woken up from the sleep that he needs. He's been forced onto the bus. He'll now go sit in the classroom with fucking fluorescent lights all day long and he'll have to ask someone when he wants to take a shit. How the fuck can you justify that in any way to me? And the fact is, not a fucking one of you ever could. Ever. Not with a straight face. Of course it's not reasonable. Now, you could run to atheism if you want to, but that's no better. It doesn't matter what fucking ideas you have. What matters is can you reason morally? Can you account for your life? Can you account for your birth? Can you account for the stories which occupy multiplicative orders of human beings who have no effective voice in their own lives and whose own sexual genitalia and whose own femininity and masculinity is being taxed more and more every day? Excess yen. Civilization has a yeast infection.